Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's a little weird to have a voice behind the video on this channel, but here I am talking, so just listen up for a sec and we'll get onto the video soon. Basically what I want to try to do is maybe make some news videos surrounding the Rangers, or possibly maybe some weekly roundup videos. Basically my goal is to just use this platform to have a voice in the Rangers online community. I tried to make Twitter kind of my place for that, and throughout the years I've gone on and off Twitter, and overall it's just a very negative experience even as a high hockey fan because I feel like those people are miserable. Anyway, on to the video here. If you're a Rangers fan tuning in, you've had a pretty wild 24 hours. I'm recording this on Monday, February 24th, aka the NHL trade deadline day, and there is certainly a lot to talk about with this Rangers team. The Rangers keeping Kreider, extending him to a seven-year deal. We'll get into that in a minute. Trading Brady Shea for a first-round pick in next year's draft. And, of course, the story that's probably been beat to death in the news by the time this video comes out, but the Igor Shosturkin and Pavel Buchnevich car accident really affecting the Rangers' playoff push here. The chemistry that Zabanajad and Kreider have had with Buchnevich all season has been a very successful one. So you hate to see Buchnevich go down, who finally seemed like he was getting his act together a little bit, after a lot of fans being down on him for not taking that next step. It seemed even into November, December of this season that a lot of fans wanted to see him gone. And since that time, it kind of feels like he's won the fan base back. He's played a lot better. He's shown that he sticks up for his teammates with the opposing defense usually trying to take on Kreider or Zibanejad. They kind of forget about Beach Navis sometimes. And obviously Igor, who has been playing out of his mind lately, will be reassessed in a couple weeks after a non-displaced rib fracture. That hurts the Rangers because, in my opinion, shared with many other Ranger fans, he is absolutely vital to this current playoff run and the future. He has been deemed the heir apparent to Lundqvist, and here he is in the middle of this playoff run, and he goes down. So the three-headed goalie situation actually ends up working out for the Rangers, at least for the moment. They have two very competent goalies in Alexander Georgiev and Henrik Lundqvist. Obviously, Lundqvist not playing too much. He's probably not going to be the guy down the stretch, but Georgiev is more than capable. Anyway, let's talk Kreider. The 28-year-old forward, who was set to become an unrestricted free agent this summer, was re-signed today to a seven-year deal with an annual average of $6.5 million. Kreider, who debuted in 2012 during the playoffs, I remember very vividly, that series because of how hard fought it was. It was awesome. Uh, if you're a Ranger fan, you probably remember that, but go back and watch some game highlights from that series. That that series versus Ottawa, seven games. I was at game seven at the Garden. Unbelievable atmosphere. I remember Girardi and Stahl scored. And now all of that seems like 30 years ago. I mean, who's even left? Anyway, sorry for the tangent. You're gonna have to get used to those. Last Friday, there was a source close to Kreider saying there was about a 65% chance of re-signing with the Rangers, and then Sunday night, Darren Dreger sent out a tweet saying the contract talks have faded between the Rangers and Kreider, and that things were not looking good, and he would likely be traded at the deadline. However, it is not uncommon nowadays for the press to be used as a negotiating tactic between a player's party and, and the team's talking with that player's agent. Anybody that's been keeping up with the Rangers during their recent hot streak knows that Kreider has been playing absolutely out of his mind after having a slow first month of the season. Pretty much since then, he's been a point-per-game player, finding phenomenal chemistry with his line mates Buchnevich and Zibanejad. Of course, his position, he's always going to get those greasy goals in and around the net. His deflections are probably amongst the best in the league. He has that signature breakaway move. He's a power forward, and I'm happy to see him still around. I actually hope he becomes the captain. That's just my opinion. Next up in the news, we have Brady Shea is headed to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for a 2020 first round draft pick. Shea, who is 25 years old, was drafted by the Rangers in 2012. During his ascent to the NHL, I remember very vividly as a Rangers fan, him being compared to, at the time, Rangers captain Ryan McDonough. So maybe all that comparison inevitably set him up for failure in the eyes of management and the fans. He's a very fascinating player. I don't dislike Shea. I actually think he still has a lot of potential. I mean, like I said, he's only 25. But I think in the Rangers situation, they just signed Kreider. Shea has this big contract. And he's definitely not living up to it at this point defensively. I mean, even just from a personal experience watching the games, there's times where I see Shea go end-to-end -end and he'll score an amazing goal. And then there's times where I'm 
watching the game and I don't know what the hell he's doing in his own defensive end. But no disrespect to Shea, good luck in Carolina. I do hate to see him go to the Hurricanes, who we are currently fighting for a playoff spot with. So just days after the Rangers' big victory in Raleigh, which saw the Blue Shirts win 5-2, to two, and additionally, Brendan Lemieux doing his own version of the Carolina Storm Surge clap, which I'm not gonna lie, I love that. Shea is officially a member of the Hurricanes. It's gonna be interesting down the stretch. Lastly, I'll just touch on the car accident real quick. I don't really know how much I can say about it. I mean, everybody's gonna say the same exact thing. It is a shame that Igor is out, but life comes at you fast sometimes, and uh, Rangers president John Davidson made the announcement, called it a curveball, and Gorton said it did not impact their decisions at all with Kreider. The focus has always been uh, on the bigger picture, and they're sticking to that plan. They obviously want to make the playoffs, but it kind of seems like a happy accident that they're this competitive at this point in the season. Carolina's goalies are injured, Columbus has a ton of injuries, and the Islanders are kind of on a cold streak. So I'm personally very excited to watch what happens down the stretch. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these in the future. Drop a comment, let me know, talk some trash, do what you guys do best, okay? Thanks so much, guys, and take it easy.